commemorating the 50th anniversary of diplomatic relations between Australia and China, this is the story of the Foundation for Australian Studies in China. FASIC. In 1972, newly elected Prime Minister Gough Whitlam announced formal diplomatic relations with the People's Republic of China. In 1978, the Australia-China Council was created to promote mutual understanding between our two countries. In the following years, the first scholars from China arrived in Sydney to study language and literature. When they returned to China, they set up the first Australian study centres in their respective universities. And in 2011, the Foundation for Australian Studies in China was established as the next step in fostering cultural and academic understanding. This is the story of FASIC. When we created FASIC at the Australia-China Council, the idea was to create a national initiative, not related to any single Australian university or state. And it was the Australia-China Council through the Department of Foreign Affairs and Trade and its advisory board that enabled all of the Australian studies to grow. Uh, it started with the dispensing from Australia of Australian literature to a range of Chinese educational establishments. And they learnt our language and our culture from these books. And that was the original intent, to build a deeper knowledge in China about Australia and simultaneously we were always seeking to get a better knowledge of Chinese culture. Educational exchanges are extremely important for cultural understanding and for dealing with other countries. To put yourself in the other shoes means having a more expansive uh, view, which is often quite liberating. A body like FASIC can help maintain the connections um, despite any political vagaries and ups and downs. There's many layers you can put into the bilateral relationship with a big, complex country like China, uh, uh, the better. It digs deeper into understanding. You understand my culture, I understand your culture. We respect each other's differences and we build from there into what the relationship might be. For us, it became trade, big focus on students, then many people wanting to visit, uh, but it starts with education. So uh, FASIC was created, the Foundation for Australian Studies in China, and I got to know Kevin Hopgood Brown, who was appointed as my deputy at the Australia China Council. Kevin Hopgood Brown and others had been very, very successful in getting large and generous donations. Uh, a number of key stakeholders at that time, the most important of which was uh, BHP, came on board and said, we think this is important. In late uh, 2012, Kevin and I uh, went along and had our first meeting with, with BHP in Melbourne about what the chair uh, would be and what the chair would do. And they gave a five-year commitment. And with that funding, we were able to negotiate an agreement with Peking University, the home base of a BHP chair of Australian studies. We've now had three BHP chairs, each there for three years. David and I worked very closely together and he put a lot of big rocks in place for FASIC, like major conferences, developing different kinds of grants, programs for different kinds of scholars that weren't there before. Having someone like David there at, at the beginning has been uh, really critical in fashioning how FASIC would operate and what it would do and what it would contribute. FASIC has, I think, set very comfortably and very effectively as a direct contact point for Australians and Chinese in the people-to-people -people exchange. The Australian Studies um, 
in China that is being conducted right now has has diversified into so many areas. So now we're looking at education, we're looking at tourism, economics, trade and investment. We're looking at diplomacy and politics. So this is really important because I think what the academics now are able to offer is really pretty much everything about Australia. FASIC has given out uh, BHP Australia China scholarships for the last eight years. All of those students will play a key role in the relationship between our, our two countries and they'll be leaders. In the future I hope to continue to develop and contribute my knowledge to make a positive impact on Australia-China relations. It makes me more hopeful for my future life, uh, can focus on my study. It means that I can I can pursue my dream. One of the projects uh, from FASIC in 2015, it's on the studies of Australian children's literature. That's the time when, you know, <laughs> I fall in love with <laughs> Australian children's literature. International collaboration plays a very big role because you can find someone in another country to help you progress with things. And, and having a relationship like that, it's very beneficial for both sides. Australian studies in China actually enlivens Australian studies in Australia. So I think it's a two-way process in which FASIC is actually saving Australian studies in Australia. I think trying to explain yourself to the outside world alerts you to the facts, the, the things you think you know, but it also um, says a lot about the things that you you don't know and you realize that you should know. Education is the key to not a certain culture, it's to all human beings.